this video, we will be doing a character analysis on Eula and a weapon comparison for all her different claymores. The first attack sequence consists of an E press followed by a Q activation followed by an E hold, then five normal attack sequence followed by two more normal attacks. Here we can see the last frame where Eula is able to gain stacks that count towards her burst. In the next frame, no more stacks will be added anymore. If we add up the total number of hits that all the different attacks made, we find that the sum comes down to 13 stacks. In the second attack sequence, it's possible to reach 14 stacks, but in this example, we will only show 13. The sequence consists of an E press, followed by a Q activation, then her first four normal attacks, into an E hold, and then finally, either her first three normal attacks or her first four normal attacks if you are fast enough. The major difference between the first attack sequence and the second attack sequence is that the first one utilizes the E hold earlier in the second half of the combo right after the Q is activated, which implements a resistance shred that is utilized by all of the following attacks. Here I will list some of the assumptions that were made while doing the damage calculation for all of the different claymores. Here is a depiction of the Python script that I used in order to calculate the damage of Eula's burst at 13 stacks for all of the weapons listed before. Some more details are also printed out on the screen. Running the code produces an output that is saved into a CSV file, which I then used to create graphs in Excel, and I present those here. Here we can see a graph that shows the burst damage for every weapon in ascending order of damage. Near the bottom we can see weapons such as the Favonius Greatsword, the Rain Slasher, and the Bell, and the Sacrificial Greatsword, which all serve different purposes and are not usually considered to be damage dealing weapons. Sacrificial weapons are usually based more for support and enabling characters to utilize their E to their fullest potential. The Favonius Greatsword is great for getting more energy recharge but not necessarily extra damage. Starting from the prototype Archaic, I believe that any weapon above this one in this ranking is very viable for Eula. Prototype Archaic is the best, easily most accessible, free to play weapon followed by the Snow Tomb Star Silver, which just barely edged out in this damage calculation. The Royal Greatsword is also a great option because of the large substat attack percent bonus and high base attack. The crit rate from the passive is typically fairly low, especially as your base crit rate gets higher, but as a damage dealing weapon, it's not bad. 
unfortunately it doesn't compare to its counterpart, the Blackcliff Slasher, which you can obtain from the Star Glitter Shop for the same price. And in this case you can see that it greatly outperforms the Royal Weapon. So if you are buying a weapon from the Star Glitter Shop, I would highly recommend the Blackcliff Slasher over the Royal Greatsword. The Lithic Blade comes out very high in this chart, but this is considering three stacks, which means three leeway characters on your team. The Lithic Blade can't be utilized to its fullest potential with Eula because she is a Mondstadt character. The Skyward Pride has a large amount of energy recharge, which doesn't show in this damage calculation, along with some other effects that were difficult to calculate. And therefore, if you have Skyward Pride, it is also a good option to have. The top three weapons are the Wolf's Gravestone, the Unforged, and the Song of Broken Pines. In this calculation, the Unforged was assumed to be used with a shield on, and therefore it is being used to its fullest potential. It shouldn't be too difficult to have a shield, as there are many characters, especially like Diona or Bido, who work very well with Eula and can apply a good shield. The Song of Broken Pines is her best in slot due to its relatively complicated effect, but mostly its speed increase, which allows Eula to get an extra stack or two for her burst. In the next chart, we can see a distribution of the number of rolls for each weapon to achieve the optimized damage. This is probably the most important chart that you'll see in this video. And what it shows you is how many times you want to roll into a given substat in order to maximize the damage on that weapon. So for example, the Blackcliff Slasher needs about 15 rolls into crit rate, which is denoted in red and then about 5 rolls into crit damage, which is denoted by the black bar. None of the other substats are very important other than attack, which can be seen by the green bar, but it is less important than crit rate and crit damage. You can refer to this chart to pick an ideal distribution for the crit rate and crit damage based on the weapon that you would like to run with Eula. Genshin Impact is not a game just about having one solo main DPS that carries you through everything. People like Ganyu and Hu Tao are a lot of fun to have, but ultimately it is up to team synergy in order to be successful and take on hard content like the Spiral Abyss. The first and foremost character that comes to mind is the little cat bartender Diona. Some might call her a budget Zong Li or a jack of all trades, but Diona is probably one of if not the best 4 star support character in Genshin Impact as she provides a very strong shield and tons of healing with her ultimate. The next recommendation I would make for Eula support would be the scary nun Rosaria. Rosaria packs a punch with her cryo elemental skill and ultimate with a focus on team support by providing crit rate to all nearby party members up to 15% of hers. Our 200 IQ coin flipping boy Kaya is very useful for Eula due to his fast E skill which can help charge her ultimate up quickly. First and foremost, Fischl should come to everyone's mind when someone says Electro Support. Casting her crow puts down Oz, which provides the continuous single target electrical turret, which is great for creating continuous superconduct reactions with Cryo. The next Electro unit that would be recommended would definitely be Bido. Due to her shield during her ultimate, and then her insane counter, Bido is a unit that you always want by your side when you're fighting hard content like the Spiral Abyss. Lisa shines by using her ultimate which, which creates a continuous electro application zapping everyone in the nearby vicinity. This is great for creating the superconduct reactions with Eula's E-Press
you should use an upper tier claymore in order to maximize Eula's damage. Basically any claymore above the prototype archaic would be a good choice depending on your situation. When using her burst, you want to aim for 13 or more stacks in order to maximize the damage potential. Also getting the resistance shred with the hold E is very beneficial as it will create a multiplier in the damage formula that will give you a lot more damage. That's about it for this video and if you've got Eula, I want to congratulate you and hope that you have a lot of fun playing with her. She's a great looking character and her kit looks like a lot of fun to use. Until next time, take care.